You know, going into Robocop 3, I was genuinely interested. I'm invested in this character. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, I uh-huh. like its universe. Mm-hmm. I like how so far, you know, the first two at least, I'm feeling good about this. Okay. I want to know what Robot Cop is up to now. Absolutely. And then I realised, oh no, these movies are bad now. <laughs> sure are. Ah. Has it made the first two worse like, by, by process of some sort of osmosis? No, I mean, that first one is just like, yeah. it's dynamite. The second <laughs> one... I like it Smaller enough. Smaller dynamite. Yeah. This is just some sort of firecracker on a holiday that <laughs> blows your thumb off. And you're like, ah, that sucks and not even in a fun way. <laughs> exactly. Welcome back to Caravan of Garbage, everybody, where we are working our way through the Robocop film series. Please leave a like if you could. Now, a bit of background on this. This was filmed in 1991, but not released until the end of 1993 because production company Orion was going bankrupt. Oh, yeah. So that's fun. Uh, I mean, fun for us. It's always fun to hear about a bankruptcy. It's fun in hindsight. It's like when you blow your thumb off, and then you think back and you're like, I wouldn't be the same if that that hadn't happened to me, you know? That's true, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So they were in a bit of trouble. They got bored out. This movie got finished, and they shoved it out. Did it get finished? (laughs) Okay. They put a cap on it. They sure did. They sure did. But it's not all bad news because it was estimated that the production of this film actually brought an additional $10 million to the Atlanta economy. So that's good. Well, that's wonderful. And that eventually led to the TV show Atlanta, presumably, somehow. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Now, I'm really interested in the minds behind this because Frank Miller has returned. Now, in Robocop 2, we know that all of his ideas pretty much were thrown in the bin and he eventually worked that into a comic book. But this time around, what they did wrote the story, mapped it all out. He's feeling pretty good. He's glad to be back in Hollywood. And they did the same thing to him again. What? (laughs) Yeah. Brutal. So he actually left Hollywood and didn't return until 2005 Sin City. Oh, yeah, of course. And then, of course, The Spirit. But, uh, Mm. you know, that's that's another movie that I... Started and went, no. no yeah, I've, no. Never, I've never gotten to the end of that. Yeah. Which means we're going to have to get to it Probably at some, at some point. point. Yeah. yeah. But here's a quote from Frank Miller. Working on Robocop 2 and 3, I learned the same lesson. Don't be the writer. The director's got the power. The screenplay is a fire hydrant and there's a row of dogs around the block waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, just some thirsty dogs. <laughs> some thirsty, hot, dry dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Boy, that's that's very poetic. Good yeah. work, Frank Miller. Absolutely. What is what's the fire hydrant? Hollywood? Yeah, I guess. Writing, directing. The screenplay is the fire hydrant. Like, terrific. And there's a row of dogs around the block waiting for it. So the, the dogs, the audience? You would think the implication there is the executives of the dogs. Yeah. But then, like, if you open up a fire hydrant... You can wet all the dogs you want. There's still plenty of water. You can you know wet I mean? so many dogs. You can wet as many dogs as you wish. It's practically limitless. Yeah, right? Maybe that's what he means. Is his ideas are practically limitless. The story this time around, how do you feel about it? Corporations are out of control. Corporations are out of control. We thought they were doing good. Mm. You know? Yeah. They built a robot cop. Right? For the city. We, the people of Detroit, thought OCP were doing such a stellar job. Yeah. This movie is way less cynical than the previous two, and it's for the worse. Yeah, it's... definitely. Now, I don't think... This is a hard and fast rule. Having a kid in a movie doesn't necessarily make it bad, Mm -hmm. but it can often indicate a bad turn for a series. Absolutely. Not always. Terminator 2 is a fantastic movie with a very annoying kid in it. That's right. That red-headed kid. Yuck. No, he's great. Oh, I I haven't seen him, officer. You son of a bitch. (laughs) That that guy's a cop. You respect him. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know where John Cutter is. (laughs) Unbelievable. Right? Who raised that boy? Mm. Who raised that young man on his little motorcycle? Probably a couple other redheads. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> no doubt. But yeah, it's never a good indicator. It's weird, though, that despite this being made very child-friendly, because that's where they were going with this. There were toys, there was an animated series, all of that. There's still multiple suicides in this movie. <laughs> mm, yeah. I mean, they're played for laughs. Sure, So yeah. that's fun, I guess. Mm. But, of course, the biggest change in this movie is we've got a new robot cop. Mm. Uh, Peter Weller was unable to reprise his role because of scheduling conflicts with Naked Lunch. Of course, yeah. Which is a movie and not... Not just a thing yeah. he gets up to. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he yeah. might. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to do a Naked Lunch with friends? Or by yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's probably better well, by yourself. Well, it's just Hollywood, isn't it? The world's a bloody fire hydrant and everybody's having a Naked Lunch. <laughs> uh, he actually had discussions with director Fred Decker about returning, but, mm. again, it just didn't happen. So now we've got... Robert John Burke, Mm. who I think does an okay job in a bad movie in an impossible role. Yeah, look, I I remembered his sort of 
Robocop mannerisms being way worse than they mm. are. I think he's got the walk down pat pretty much. Sure. The voice doesn't do it for me, though. No, the voice really takes me out of it. Unfinished business. And also he's... More quippy in a very contrived way. There's a moment where he goes to uh, get revenge on the, the rehab troops that kill uh, Officer Lewis. And one of them's about to light a cigarette and he's like, I'll take care of that. And then he blasts them all with a flamethrower. I'm like, you just stand around there for like 20 minutes <laughs> for one of those guys to go on a cigarette break. Or you wait for one of the guys to say, boy, I sure don't have a lot of bullets in me. And then he could be like, I'll take care of that. Wait, I just need to change the attachment on my arm. I mean, he was up against it. Because he was hired specifically because he fit the measurements of the suit. Oh, no. <laughs> they took the suit from Robocop 2, they repainted it so it's less blue. Mm. So it was basically like, we need a guy who can fit this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that saves on budget. Apparently the neck didn't fit him at all and was quite painful. Okay, I mean, it's, right. it's a painful situation regardless. You can't adjust the neck? Just, nah. Okay, then, great. Nah. You can take it off. Yeah. <laughs> give him a turtleneck. That's right, yeah. We've upgraded you, Robocop. Murphy, we've salvaged some of your neck skin from your <laughs> coffin. But, you know, I like that he's got a gun arm. That's cool, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? Again, I don't think it's anything to do with Robert John Burke. I think he did a pretty good job, again, in this very difficult situation. He's done good work since. I did uh, some good work on Rescue Me. Oh, remember Rescue show, Me. You know? I remember that. He was, on, he was on a little show called A Gossip Girl. I don't know if oh, you remember that. Oh, my God. He was the gossip girl. He gossiped. That's right, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's wow, right. that's, that's hard work. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I think um, uh, Nancy Allen's good. Yep. As ever as uh, Lewis, of course, but... Uh, I mean, they give her something to do this time. Get machine gun to Yeah, them. she does. <laughs> That's right. And there's a moment where, Robo again, Robocop's about to fight the rehab guys, but he can't kill them because they're OCP employees. Yeah. And he, like, shoots down at their feet, and then he just lets Lewis stand in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Murphy, you're the bulletproof one. What are you doing? His neck is exposed now. Mm. He but doesn't I, want to get shot. That's true. <laughs> I suspect Nancy Allen probably wanted to go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. And I think... The squibbing is pretty good. It's not OCP executive being murdered by Ed 209 good, because no, you, obviously... You can't in this. You can't in this. But it was, you know, pretty, there's there's a decent amount of squibs on her. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Also, uh, her death in this movie was publicly revealed a year earlier. Oh, no. For reasons that we will talk about. But yeah, she's great as always. Well, they should have, you know, they should have given us a fake hair like they did in Star Trek 2. You exactly, know? just like yeah. Star Trek 2. She gets machine gun and like riddled with a thousand squibs and then it turns out it's just a, it's the Kobayashi Maru simulation. Oh, also, perfect opportunity to have second Robocop. Second Robocop, right? Can you imagine such a thing? No. No, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> I mean second Robocop or a scene in which she is turned into Robocop and pulls her own head off. <laughs> sure, <laughs> absolutely, Maybe. yeah. So the violence in this, the studio mandate was obviously tone it right down. And we see that when Edward 209 he just riddles some cop cars with bullets. Robocop at the end when he busts into the warehouse to kill everybody or whatever he's doing. Wherever he busts into. <laughs> that thing that he does in every movie. He busts into a place and he kills everybody. That's right. He's using a flamethrower yeah. as opposed to riddling everybody with bullets. Which you'd think would be cool as hell. Yeah. But it's usually not. Nah. It's, you know, he's flamethrowing people and they're like, oh, my skin. That stings. But I tell you what, I do like Bruce Locke as a Tomo. The, uh, the uh, Japanese Robocop replacement. The, yeah. The android ninja. I do as well. I like his... Uh, I like... <laughs> I like the fact that he can convert his face from just stoic robot warrior to just absolutely like deranged mess. Yeah, I think absolutely. that's impressive. The moment where he gets his jaw knocked off and he has to like sort of wrench his jaw back into place yeah. looks incredible. That's great work. Completely agree. I think there's definitely something T1000 about him, mm. whether that is intentional or not, because this was filmed in 1991. I mean, there is morphing in this movie, of course. Oh my God, I mean, there's there so much morphing. There is a moment where uh, Murphy sort of, he hurtles down the information super highway cyber hole of his <laughs> memories. And <laughs> and he comes up, he comes across like the face of his, his ex-wife that then morphs into the face of the new girl in his life. The woman he knows. Yeah, yeah the woman he knows. The <laughs> other woman he knows. Because the third woman he knew got shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's great stuff. Oh, which reminds me, what a cavalcade of just TV stars of the 90s in this. Who have we got? We have Rip Torn. Damn. From the Larry Sanders show, of course, as the new CEO of OCP, who's not really committed to the role. I mean, Rip Torn is, but the yeah, new yeah. CEO is just like, I could take or leave this job, really. I don't know. Japanese investors? Sure, why not? Or Whatever, not. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, we get Bradley Whitford. Yes. Soon to be in the West Wing. Oh, my God. Incredible. He's, he's gearing up. You can tell. <laughs> Right. He knows it's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Um, we get CCH Pounder. Uh, we get, of course, Stephen Root. 
mm, news radio. That's right. And other is. things, but at this time, news radio. News radio, yeah. Uh, and of course, he's the stapler guy from Office Space. That's exactly Sometimes we have to name specific roles, otherwise people will say, "I can't believe you didn't." Mention that very specific thing that they're in. Yes, exactly right. And of course, we get uh, Jeff Garland as the guy in the donut shop. Ooh. Of course, you'll know from the movie, I want someone to eat cheese with. <laughs> That's the sp- is that the specific reference you want, you dogs? That's the one I wanted. That's right. And of course, we get uh, Jill Hennessy mm. uh, as Dr. Lazarus. You'll know Jill Hennessy as uh, uh, Jordan Crossing from the TV show Crossing Jordan. I remember. <laughs> Because if you cross Jordan, what happens? You get a crossed Jordan. That's right. She becomes very cross. <laughs> but what a world. Just a, just a bunch of very talented uh, people just slumming it. I feel Surprise like me. Or, or there is this their first foray into... For some of them, I would like say. Like big, big Hollywood productions, maybe, and then their, their yeah. talents were seen elsewhere, probably. You might be right, yeah. Mm. I just wanted to quickly get back to uh, the storyline of this. So basically... OCP, in conjunction with the Japanese, have decided to drive everybody... The Japanese Kanemitsu Corporation, not all, not everybody in Japan. Really? No, I think they speak on behalf of all <laughs> Japanese people. You think they took a vote? I think so, okay, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> that uh, they've got to basically push people out of their homes to build this new city they've been talking about for three movies now. Delta City. But they also have the help of a grey-haired gentleman who has these corporate cops... And the regular cops, the real cops, the heart of the city. That's right. They don't, they don't necessarily want to borrow this. They don't yeah. want to be throwing people out of their homes. Back the blue, I say. Don't back the light grey. <laughs> doesn't right. even work, does it? This doesn't even work. Uh, and, of course, they've chosen you know, the absolute most despicable example of, a, of, a, of an evil villain, a British man. God, he's so evil. Yuck. But uh, I feel like, though, with the villains, the timing of it doesn't work. For example, with the, with the Japanese cyborg robot, who's just a robot, I assume, and not a man at all. Well, I mean... Because there's three of them. Yeah, there is three. That's true, yeah. Unless they were triplets. I don't know. But Robocop only meets one of them like 10 minutes before the end. And then he meets another two 10 minutes later. Uh I feel like that's something you do way earlier. Mm. And you show how dangerous one of these things are and he barely gets through it. And then two show up at the end, right? That's kind of the way that you'd think Absolutely. you'd want to do it. I don't know, man. You do it mini boss, full boss style or whatever. You know, like yeah. in a Dark Souls or whatever, you fight one of them. And you're like, boy, tough boss battle. And then later there's two of them. Yeah. You know? And you go, I hate this game. And you put it down and you never play it again. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Or you get good, scrub. I don't have another time for that. <laughs> Why don't you make a game that's accessible to me? Why don't you bend around my abilities, that's Mason? A, that's a great point. Why is it always me caving to big gaming? It's a great point. Mario should be shorter is what I'm saying. The first Mario. Super Mario Brothers on the Yeah, house. yeah. Well, I could do that first level pretty easily. And I would love it if that was the end. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyways, at the end, the police take a stand. The police chief specifically is like, I'm not going to do your dirty work, you British fuck. He doesn't say that because (laughs) he can't, because it's not that kind of movie. Mm. And at the end, the whole community stands up against these corporations, and then Robocop's like, I've got a jetpack. Look out, everybody, and he's flying in. And you'd think it'd be really cool, but it's not really. (laughs) It's quite bad. I don't know whether it's... Like, it doesn't look necessarily terrible for the time, but Mm. it doesn't feel earned. I'm not like, God, he really overcame a bunch of stuff in this. There's a moment in it where he's flying across the the ruined cityscape, and there's all the rehab cops there fighting, and Mm. he just... Just stuff starts blowing up. Yeah. And you're like, is he doing that or yeah, he's just, doing is it. It just is it just the warranty on those cars expiring <laughs> and they're just going up on their own? Yeah, that um, might be it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the, all that goes down. But, of course, Dr. Lazarus, she opens up like a pirate broadcast channel and she goes to every TV in the city and she's like, hey, everybody, you thought OCP had all your best interests in mind, but actually they don't. <laughs> and, and everybody's like, oh, my God, she's <laughs> right. And then we cut to, like, the OCP offices and the, the, the CEO's being told that their stock price is tanking. <laughs> and, it's, and he's like, we're ruined. <laughs> They'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine, I think, yeah. I think it's hilarious at the end as well that after Robocop defeats and kills whoever he has to or whatever. Okay, so here's what happens. He he defeats British Man yep. by blasting his feet with, with jetpack fire. Something happens. Yeah, yeah. And, and the little kid uh, defeats uh, the two Otomo robots yeah. by reprogramming them to cut each other's heads off. That's cool. Yeah, and that's exactly uh, if the people want to I like his broken up face. Yes, yeah, that's an homage to what happened to Rocky in Apollo Creed. <laughs> After the freeze frame at the end of Rocky Three, they beheaded each yeah, other. Yeah, they they punched each other's heads off. Oh my god! Yeah, pretty cool, right? I hope they're all right. No, they're dead. Oh no! The remaining movies are just their last neurons firing, <laughs> and just a beautiful dream they're having. <laughs> well, that's no good. So Rocky dreamed he had cancer yep. for a bit. Yep. Rocky dreamed he wasn't in Creed Three. That's correct. Yep. Wow. Yep. 
That's fantastic. Pretty good, right? Imagine having a dream where you're just sitting something out. Just being oh like, my god, yeah. <laughs> just canceling like you. you That's want, like double rest. Yeah, my god, you have a dream where you want you really want to cancel some plans, and then your friend calls up and cancels the plans already, and you're like, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty disappointed. Ah, uh, back to sleep for me. Oh, terrific. Uh, yeah, and then he died because <laughs> his head was cut off. His head was cut off. Yeah. <laughs> But it's also interesting because despite this Japanese corporation who was speaking on behalf of the entire Japanese community, was that something you said, I believe? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agreed. That at the end, you know, they've been defeated and he's in the street and he like bows to Robocop out of respect. And it's like, what the fuck is this? What do you, what do you, I don't understand. Like, wh- why would Robocop even care if this guy likes him who tried to destroy him? Yeah, right. What does that matter? You, you said guys to cut his head off. <laughs> You, come on. It's so weird that Robocop didn't kill him. And then Rip Torn's like, hey, what's going on? I like you, Robocop. And Robocop's like, we're not mates. That's right. And that's the ending. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful message that you can tell someone you, you know, you're not their mate. You know? <laughs> you know Honesty the- is the best policy. That's what he's learned. That's what he's learned over the course of these three movies. <laughs> it's not. It's nothing about duty or, you know. Um, love. Love or finding scraps of your humanity and... and- yeah. And becoming a new person or whatever. It's it's realising you can tell someone you're not mates anymore. You can be a bit rude. You can be a bit rude if you want to. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Now, according to director Fred Decker... Oh, yes. That's great to say, by the way. Try mm. that at home. Uh, he had some regrets about this movie, huh. unfortunately. He said, if I had to do certain things over for Robocop 3, it would be hiring an Asian stunt team for the fight sequence between Robo and Otomo. Now, okay, that, that is probably ac- very accurate yeah. and true. But also, I feel like that wasn't the trend at the time in Hollywood. Absolutely That's, not. I don't know when that interview's from, but I can, I'm can. i going to take a wild guess and say it's after The Matrix came out. <laughs> because then, obviously, it would make sense yeah. after that. But prior to that, it's, you know... Yep. Why, why would you bring in outside guys when you've got you know, some regular guys? It says they caught him here coming out of the screening of The Matrix. Yeah, that'll Reloaded. He didn't see the first one. Yeah, right. That's weird. Isn't yeah. that weird? Uh, he would have made the flying sequence really exciting and really different. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And he would have added more humor. You know, if we had more time, we'd make this video better as well. <laughs> Just better. There's one of these a week. What do you want from Ben and Lawrence? <laughs> They're trying their best. They're killing themselves for you guys. That's right. Just some respect. But if they could make it a bit better. I would love that. I don't even know what specifically you yeah, would do. If they could just be inspired more, <laughs> you know? Like Fred Decker would have been. That's right, yeah. Uh, he would have also added more humour. more f- Just good, just better <laughs> jokes. Yeah. Just add more jokes, you know? Ben and Lawrence, if you could just add some more jokes. <laughs> just find one of those email forwards from back in the 90s filled with old jokes and just yeah, stick some in. Yeah, it in, yeah. yeah. Uh, more for the, his characters to do and do more special things with it. Okay. Look, well, man, it's bad. Hmm. But also... What do you do with Robocop 3 when they're mm. like, make it more kid friendly? Also, we've run out of money. Yeah. What, right. do you, what do you do? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I think he did an okay job in this situation. Yeah, uh huh, absolutely. Yeah. Anyways, it's time for three trivia. Love the that. trivia section. Uh, where we do trivia. It's not three. I think in retrospect, yeah. if you had more time, mm. you should have come up with a better title for that. Oh, I yeah. think you could have. Yeah, but I didn't have more time, did I? No. I only had this whole week to come up with it. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And you were too busy watching The Matrix Reloaded, so... Listen, I also need people to know, because they often they say to me, James, why didn't you, you say, like, Robo Trivia or something like that? Yeah. I'm intentionally trying to make these as aesthetically unpleasant as possible. I understand. <laughs> Just so people know. It's actually harder to make it unpleasant. This seems like a Fred Decker-style retcon to me. <laughs> So uh, this is just really for me, but somebody actually says Robot Cop in this movie. Robot Cop. I love that. Love that. Jeff Garland said he had eaten 36 donuts during the shooting of the donut shop scene. Huh. There you go. Unlike the first two movies, this one, and you probably know this, did not receive a novelization. Interesting. Alan Dean Foster mustn't have been available, I'd (laughs) imagine. uh Uh-huh. And due to repeated delays faced by the film's production, Ocean's Robocop 3 game, which was an adaptation of the film and closely, closely, (laughs) it followed the plot sort of. It came out on PC and Amiga two years before the film was released, thus spoiling it for players. That's right. So that's how the Nancy Allen thing happened. And the other thing is, we've actually played this game and other Robocop games. We have a series called Never Go Back. It's paywalled. That's right. Just so you know, it's paywalled. That's right. We, we lured you in and then we tricked you with the paywall thing. That's right. But you're already there on the website, <laughs> bigsandwich.co. You're already there. That's right. You might as well put your credit card details in. Well. There's movie commentaries. There's bonus podcasts. 
the video game Let's Plays, as mentioned, we've done a bunch by now. Nothing sus. Nothing sus. It's all about. It's like our Patreon. Mm. It's like our Patreon. It's, it's like a Patreon. It's good and we love it. Relax. Relax. You're freaking out. Relax. Just, just put your money in. <laughs> now, the box office for this movie on a budget of $22 million. Seems wrong, but all right. Uh, that's not bad. That's I mean, not bad. It doesn't look terrible. No, really, I agree. Yeah. But again, that's probably because all we're really focusing on is the Robocop suit and they stole it from the last production. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so the box office return was $47 million. So this made money back and enough that they went, okay, we're going to try a TV show. Oh, that TV show didn't work. Okay, we're going to try another sort of mini TV show in the mm. early 2000s. As mentioned last week, we might come back to those another time. But what we're really going to look at next week... The big one, the real deal. Oh, yes. Is the 2014 reboot. Oh, my God. Robocop 4, mm -hmm. they call it. That's what they call it. And that's mm. what it's called. Yeah. I consider that a separate a separate beast. Definitely. Remake. So how do you feel about the trilogy overall, having just done the, the, the full rewatch? I mean, one is incredible. It is, yeah. And the other ones make it look even more incredible. <laughs> it's true. Again, I like the second one, but it, uh, it's mm. not a patch on the first. And I think this one as well, it dropped the ball again. But I, I understand why it's... You know, it's, it's following on from the second one, obviously. Mm. But it, it, they dropped the ball again on making Murphy of just a weird robot again. Yep. I didn't like it. Yeah. Just if, if they're going to do a reboot of this, and they will. Yes. Because people remember it somewhat. <laughs> uh, let let him, let the next actor show his humanity. Let him live. Let him live. Let, let him, him run free. That's right. <laughs> let him run free in the fields. <laughs> oh, they did that in Robocop 4. Remember? Oh, yeah, he does he goes, run in goes the, the run, yeah. Anyways, come back next week for that. And another thing that goes up at BigSandwich.co, in addition to all the other wonderful things I've already mentioned. Oh, that's so wonderful. These videos go up there early, don't they, Mason? That's right. And that one will be no exception if you do want to check it out. What a bargain. What an absolute bargain. <laughs> that's right. Well, it's, uh, it's, are we if, the corporation? If anything, it's too cheap. <laughs> If anything, it's quite sus, honestly. <laughs> Are we the bad guys? Are we like big business now, bullying people out of their homes and onto bigsandwich.co? We're not, but we could start. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a really good idea. I'm actually not that busy. Yes. Because those titles for trivia doesn't take me that long, actually. Interesting. Yeah, I lied. <laughs> Is it just the first thing you think of? It's mostly the first thing, yeah. It's yeah. the first and worst thing I could think of. Great. Anyways, thanks for watching this. We appreciate it. Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. It comes out every Monday. And we'll see you all on the next thing. Grab it out, Jamie, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.